everybody, Quad Nines here, and this is an uh, update for my Ural the Mist Stalker ADH deck. I did a deck tech for it like two years ago, I guess, and I've changed a few things, uh, upgraded a few things. Um, just thought I'd uh, go over it again. Um, but yeah, the general is Ural the Mist Stalker. He's a Voltron general. You do 21 or more commander damage just to win the game. It gets around stuff like Aloro that can gain tons and tons of life. Um, you know, it's just an alternate win condition, really, than what normal uh, commander games end in. So, uh, I really like him because he's got hexproof, and hexproof is really busted. Um, anyway, let's just get right into the deck. Uh, I do play a pretty good number of basics, I suppose, for a three-color deck. Uh, let me see me four. Let's get one, two, three, four, five forests, I think. One, two, um, yeah, four planes and a mountain. So, ten basics. Uh, and then the non basics I've got a windswept teeth, foothills, and aired mesa to go get uh, either savannah, taiga, plateau, or temple garden, stomping ground, sacred foundry, uh, some other dual lands. Um, not fishable, but still good. Some Petal Grove, Rootbound Crag, Clifftop Retreat. I've also got uh, the three temples. Um, deck doesn't have a ton of card draw, so the scry does help out. Uh, especially if playing one on the first couple turns, it doesn't slow me down. I don't do a ton the first couple turns. Um, got a Temple of the False God. Uh, it is French. I just know that says Temple of the False God, but my French is bad, so... Uh, I've got a Sayer Sanctum. I uh, picked up a Japanese one a while back. So, there's not a full one, so it's kind of the more, the better one you can get, or the more rare one, however you want to look at it. Uh, taps for tons of mana in this deck sometimes. Uh, got a Strip Mine, because I like to be able to get rid of the occasional Guy's Cradle or even worse, Glacial Chasm on the other side so I can attack. Uh, Tech Edge, some a little bit nicer. Uh, land destruction, you know, you can't just completely take care of all their lands. They have, they have to have four um, for you to be able to get one of them. So, uh, Treetop Village, occasionally I don't draw any lands. I mean, I don't draw any creatures, and I just need a, a attacker to get in there or a blocker to keep from getting killed myself. And Treetop Village is one of the better ones because it has trample. And it wears auras actually pretty well. Uh, Slayer Stronghold. Uh, can give Ural haste and vigilance and a little power bump for only two mana and this land tap, so it's it's just reasonable. Uh, being able to keep him vigilant and uh, back on defense is usually the the main reason. The power bump is good too, though. Uh, Scar Rage Pits uh, gives it trample and a little power bump. Good stuff. Wolf Run trample and up to a big power bump. So I got a couple ways to give uh, Ural trample because that's very important in this deck to, be able to get the damage through. Uh, Contested Cliffs is a favorite card of mine. It says choose target beast you control. You're always a beast. And you green red tap it and it fights a uh, target creature and opponent controls. He wins almost every fight, obviously, because he's usually at least a 5 5, but usually more like a 9 9 or 11 11 or more. Uh, Command Tower, of course, Manic Confluence, and Jungle Shrine. Taps for all three colors that I need. Uh, On to the Non-creature, non-land spells. The only artifact I believe I have in the deck is a soul ring, because why would you not run soul ring? Uh, source to plowshares and path. Cheap removal. Uh, Boros Charm is really good to give him double strike. Uh, sometimes it's good to give indestructible if they're doing something like Wrath of God, Spring Verdict, these things, uh, trying to wipe the board since they can't target him. They'll use mass board wipes, and this keeps him around. Uh, Celestia Charm, I find, is very good. Now, giving him Trample, once again, very very useful, but being able to exile uh, creatures with power 5 or greater, like I've, I won a game by exiling someone's Avacyn. Um, so, kind of kind of hard to get through an Avacyn. Uh, 
no matter what the deck is. But yeah, if you can exile Avacyn or something, you know, uh, an Ulamog, something like that that's indestructible, it really helps out. Cross and Grip, yeah, EDH staple. Savage Beating is one of these cards I've added recently uh, that allows me to take more than one combat step. Um, so pretty good stuff. Get to sometimes kill two people in one turn. Uh, Armed and Dangerous, I'm thinking about cutting this. I'm not sure I'll cut it for, but I usually just give him plus one, plus one, and double strike, and then say, make somebody block my Birds of Paradise. Make all the creatures. That way, just, it's guaranteed to get three for six mana. Sometimes just the two mana to give him double strike and plus one, plus one. Uh, Team or Battle Rage, I think is probably just better. So, might be swapping that out soon. Uh, Cultivate is just some mana ramp and fixing. Uh, probably should run a little bit more mana ramp, to be honest. I just, show me sweet enchantments. So. Uh, Crew Fixes Insight, this is pretty much draw three, reveal the top six, put the, up to three enchantments. I always hit at least one. I must say always. I don't recall not, not hitting one. Usually hit two and most time three. Uh, Idyllic Tutor. Just great, great tutor for um, enchantments, and this deck's full of them, so great tutor. It only costs three mana, but it is sorcery speed, so that's a little bad. Uh, Replenish. have definitely blown some people out with this before. Well, they'll wipe the board. All my enchantments go in the yard, or they'll destroy them. They go in the yard, get your all out, and then they don't think anything about him because he didn't have anything on him, and I don't have but maybe one or two cards in my hand. Well, I cast this and bring them all the enchantments back and just, you know, put them on him. Seems good. Just enchant him, get like three or four enchantments at one time. If something gives him like pro creatures, you just swing in and kill him. Uh, I do have a couple board wipes, but the right ones for this deck are Divine Reckoning, which you can choose to keep your role and destroy. Everybody chooses one creature, you always choose your role, obviously. And uh, destroy the rest. It also has flashbacks, so you get two uses out of it. And Winds of Wrath, which destroys all creatures with no enchantments on them, and they can't be regenerated. So, uh, just better than Day of Judgment. I mean, not Day of Judgment. Uh, Wrath of God, because it does have the regeneration clause. But since he's always pretty much enchanted, he... He's just wrath-proof as far as that goes. Uh, three dreams. Um, usually get three one-mana auras. Um, I'll go over those later. But, yeah, there's a bunch of good ones. Sometimes you get a removal spell. So, uh, Bonfire of the Dam can get that last bit of damage through a certain opponent if you're not trying to general damage them, if other people would beat him down. If we've got low life, sometimes you can just target them, wipe their board, and just kill them on the spot. Um Sometimes you just want to clear out the blocker so your old can get through. Mana Bloom is very good because you can uh, cast it with X equals zero just so you can uh, get enchantment draw triggers every turn. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's good mana fixing too. So Solid card. Chain of the Rocks is one of the removal spells I was talking about. I usually have a mountain of some kind, so being able to remove something, exile it for just one white. Pretty useful. Ghostly Prison. I have a ton of enchantments and this is one of my favorite ones because it basically makes people leave me alone because nobody likes paying two mana for each creature to attack me um so any deck that runs white and EDH something like this is probably a good idea to run uh, enchantress's presence uh an enchantment that draws you a card every time you play another enchantment seems good only three mana uh draw tons off of this aggravated assault is an enchantment and also has the Five mana, untap all creatures you control after this combat. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Play this ability only anytime you can play a sorcery. So you have to do it beforehand, so they see it coming, but usually it doesn't matter. Fires of Yavimaya, uh, really play this to give your haste, and once he's already attacked, then I can sack it and pump him. So it's twofold there. Dueling Grounds uh, keeps me from getting overwhelmed by rush strategies or token decks, and also makes it where they can't double or triple block your roll because they can only block with one creature. Face Fetters, more removal. Stranglehold is just for those decks that like take all the turns or tutor a billion times, and it's an enchantment, and they usually draw me cards. Uh, Ley Line of Punishment is in here uh, to keep people from gaining life because that's kind of annoying when you're just trying to kill them with one big swing. Uh, not as big for commander damage, but the, the big thing here is it says damage can't be prevented. Uh, usually there's different ways of like, not necessarily fogging, but s similar things to that to stop the, the combat damage on a turn or the, uh, the general damage. So this kind of gets around those shenanigans. Sphere safety, 
Like I said, if I get this out, uh, usually with the other enchantments I have, like there's no way they can ever attack me without at least removing this first. Sigil Empty Throne. Occasionally Ural gets dealt with, like he gets turned into a... Um, uh, I've had him flipped over with, is it Ixidor? Is that it? Where he flip, makes everything into flipped over morph creatures. So then I had to play this out and just play a bunch of enchantments. Get four, four angels, beat down that way. Uh, Simul Legion can just win you the game. The card is insane. If it's left unchecked for even two or three turns, it just it snowballs so fast. Uh, Mirari's Wake, the plus one, plus one is actually pretty good in your world because if you put uh, just, there's, a couple combinations of enchantments you can put on him where he's just easily a two a two hit kill without having to get a double strike or something. But the plus one really helps out. And also mana ramp. So this card uh drives people crazy because it gives all your stuff hex proof. Um so they have to get rid of this first and get rid of something else. Uh as if you're all having hex proof isn't bad enough, giving all your stuff hex proof, it's really good. Uh sorry this is running a little long. I love all these cards, so I try and go over them. Uh, Thera Armor is one of the best ones to go get because it's at least plus three, plus three on Ural, but usually it's more like plus seven, and it gives first strike, so it's great. Uh, this one was actually recommended the last time I did this video for me to add. It's a Blessing of the Nephilim. Uh, it gets plus one, plus one for each color, so it's three colors, and then it gets plus two, so it's plus five, plus five for one white mana. Really good. Rancor. Obviously, like I said, giving him trample is huge. And the fact you can get it back if for some reason he dies or if you want to slap it on another creature early, it'll just come back once they die and once it goes to the graveyard. An Umbra is pretty important to have. Like, this is another one I'll go get from the three uh, three dreams. Uh, usually, like, the um, Ethereal Armor, Spider Umbra, and then either Rancor or something else uh, to him all kinds of abilities but totem armor being the best that way if there's a board wipe he doesn't die so uh daybreak cornet uh the reprint really helped me get this one because it was crazy expensive before that i do like the full of Bermaz actually with his gryffindor scarf on uh but yeah it's it's really he's almost always enchanted already so throwing this on him gives him at least plus five plus five first strike vigilance lifelink i mean for two mana it's crazy uh spirit mantle pro creatures no chump blocks for you. Uh, it's better than trample. It's two mana and gives plus three, plus three with your roll. Flicker form is one of the few ways I have gotten out of the Ixidor deal where he gets flipped over. Then I can put this on him and then flicker him and then comes back and he's right side up. So uh, this is my latest edition from Eternal Masters. It's just amazing art on his ancestral mask. Uh, and card is insane. If there's any other enchantments for other other people, it's you just get, he gets unbelievably big it's just like uh, like sometimes like enough people have enough enchantments i can just play this and he's already enough to kill somebody with commander damage he's like a 22 or something like that so or 21 21 23 really sweet card shield of oversoul uh gives it him flying and indestructible and plus four plus four uh, unflinching courage armadillo cloak pretty much the same card except for this is not actual lifelink it's triggered uh, after the damage, uh, you could also put it on a, somebody else's creature and then you'd gain the life whenever they do damage. Old trick. This one is straight up life link. They're both pretty, pretty much the same. Uh, Sage of Reverie does draw me cards, can draw me quite a few actually. It does cost four mana, but you know, the, the flying toilet paper art is worth having in the deck. Spirit Mantle, or not, Holy Mantle, sorry. The other pro creature enchantment. It, it is four, so it's a little pricey make up this as well soon but i like having the pro creature ones that way they can't block and it is plus four plus four with your ability uh bear umbra uh you can definitely go infinite or not necessarily infinite but uh get multiple attack steps out of like what aggravated assault because every time you attack you get to untap all your lands and then you get to pay the the cost to do that to again and just keep attacking so it's pretty good and like i said it's a Totem armor, so once again keeps you all from dying. Uh, On some creatures, I do have some bestow creatures first. They're really good in the deck. Uh, Hopeful Eidolon just is the cheap one. It only costs four to put on. Gives him life link and a little bit bigger. Boon Seder, honestly, I just flash him in sometimes just to you know to ambush stuff. But uh, if you ever put him on Euro, it's just really silly. Especially if you can do it on instep for five mana. Uh, gives him plus six plus four. 
makes him huge. I say that a lot, but he just gets so big. It's crazy. Uh, Ghost Blade Eidolon, the double strike is really, really big. Uh, kill somebody out of nowhere with this. So. Uh, Nylea's Emissary, once again, the bestow creature that gives a good bump in power and toughness and gives trample. And occasionally you play it in a pinch for four mana, have a 3-3 trample that you can slap other enchantments on and then, you know, if you just want to do regular damage or have to block or whatever. And then these are my non-enchant bestow creatures. We've got Bird's Paradise. Uh, I do need a little fixing. I don't, there's not a lot of red mana in this deck, but uh, it is a pain when I don't draw a mountain, so it can definitely help out with that. Avazin's Pilgrim, fixing my white mana is usually important. Got more green than anything. This is my Naya Elf. Does cost two mana, but being able to tap for all the three colors is, is worth it. Uh, Hero of Iros makes just throwing enchantments on your old pretty cheap. And occasionally you just throw them on him and he gets big with his heroic ability. Hero of the Pantheon um, makes my enchantments cheaper and gains me a little bit of life. And it's just a 2-2 two, two for two, so it's not bad. Uh, Witch Stalker is like a backup win condition. Uh, being able to put enchantments on this guy, especially if there's any blue or black players at the table. Um, he gets pretty big and uh, can do a fair amount of damage. I have killed, like, got down somebody down to, like, 17 life, but they haven't had enough general damage. But some other players have gotten in there, too. So slapped a couple things on this guy and gave him unblockable somehow and just kill him. Helios Pilgrim searches up whatever ore I may want. So it's just like a tutor on a, on a creature that can block. Uh, Mace Enchantress draws me a lot of cards. And it just got reprinted at Uncommon in Eternal Masters, but I prefer, prefer the original full because, I don't know, the Planar Chaos fulls look pretty good. Uh, Eternal Witness, my stuff does die. It's occasionally good to get it back. And why would you not play Eternal Witness in a green deck? Oracle, um, just... This is one of the few ways I can really ramp out, and I really love this card. Playing extra lands turns great. Uh, Eidolon of Blossoms, just another like enchantress type effect. It counts itself, and any time you have to play an enchantment, you draw a card. Acidic Slime, you just need this. Um, you need to be able to do this in most any EDH deck build blow, whatever's bothering you up, whether it be artifact, enchantment, or land. And uh, usually if it's bad enough for you to blow it up, like nobody really can get mad because you're like, well, it's killing everybody. i got to blow it up. Uh, Sigarda, I could actually cut the few red cards and just run Sigarda as my general, but I like your so Sigarda does get in there sometimes, slap a couple enchantments on her, and she'll just end the game fast as well and keeps people from making any sack stuff, which is always good. And Sun Titan gets back like 90% of the spells in the, in the deck uh, when he enters the battlefield or attacks, and he's a 6-6 Vigilance, so sometimes that's enough. Uh, kind of rambled a little bit. It is early in the morning for me, per usual, when I'm doing a video. So uh, forgive the the ums and the ramble like I always do. But uh, I did want to go over this deck again. I'm really, really excited with it. Uh, I like uh, the extra fools I picked up since I did this video last time. And the deck's just a lot of fun. Uh, I try not to just really play it a ton because people do get tired of it after a while. And then they start picking on your commander and then you just get headed out of the game so it's fun in short small doses so that's why luckily i have a lot of commander decks to kind of cycle through them but uh if you're looking for a voltron and you don't want to go straight up rafiq and get immediately headed off your table try your rule he's uh he's really good and ends games out of nowhere which is i don't know it's just uh, makes for good stories uh if you have any questions or comments uh suggestions on what i could add that you didn't see just leave it down below and thanks for watching